how many storylines have been set up heading into this season. You get on Twitter, it's like the world, the whole world is about to end. It's like, oh, Tyreek hates Patrick Mahomes. Right. He says Tua is, has better accuracy and he only can throw the ball deep. It's time to look ahead to the upcoming season. So let us take a look at the 10 biggest NFL storylines heading into 2022. Let's kick this off out west in San Francisco, where one of the most fascinating quarterback controversies that we've seen in some time will play out. The 49ers are coming off another NFC Championship game appearance with Jimmy G, and sadly, for Niners fans at least, another instance in the line of many where their QB didn't quite seem to have the right stuff to get an otherwise stellar team over the hump in a big game. There have been rumors swirling around Garoppolo pretty much since the day he showed up in San Francisco, but with 2021 third overall pick Trey Lance heading into his sophomore year, Jimmy G's seat in the quarterback room is scorching hot. So much so that it seems like a far gone conclusion that at some point this year, Lance will be slotted in as the starter. But that being said, just because Lance looked decent during his limited action last year, thrown for 603 yards and 5 touchdowns with just 2 interceptions, while adding 168 yards and another score on the ground, that doesn't mean he's a sure thing. There are a lot of people in and around the league that think Trey Lance is the real deal. But the reality is, is that the young quarterback is still largely unproven. So the question remains, how much faith does San Fran have in Lance? Will he perform well enough that the Niners will be ready to part ways with Garoppolo? And say Lance balls out, but San Francisco decides to keep Garoppolo in town as an insurance policy. Will Jimmy still play nice in the locker room? Either way, it's going to be very interesting to see how this whole situation ends up shaking out. While we're talking about quarterback competition, the Pittsburgh Steelers should see a very interesting one play out this year in camp. There are two legit contenders for the starting job, free agent acquisition and former second overall pick of the Chicago Bears, Mitchell Trubisky, and the Steelers' own first round pick from the 2022 NFL Draft, Kenny Pickett. Obviously, having invested the 20th overall pick in Pickett, Pittsburgh thinks the former Pitt standout can lead the Steelers back to prominence in the post-Big Ben era. But in Trubisky's case, there is a precedent for first-round quarterbacks finding success in a new city after their first one ruled them a bust. I mean, just ask Steve Young or Vinny Testaverde. Competition is a good thing, and I'm sure the Steelers will ultimately be happy if one of these quarterbacks can prove themselves as the franchise QB regardless of which it is. But it's a bit of a catch-22 in some ways, because with each strong Trubisky performance, Pickett's value on the trade market is gonna drop. Meaning that if Trubisky ends up winning the starting job, or is handed it by default because the Steelers want to give Pickett time to develop, and Mitch just balls out, especially with any sort of consistency, a very interesting dynamic will arise in Pittsburgh. How much leash will they give Mitch? And if he does continue to play well, what are they going to do with Pickett? Everyone knew that Mike Domlin was going to have his work cut out for him once Ben Roethlisberger finally retired, but this could get hairy very fast. The only thing that could make this situation even more complicated is if Roethlisberger decides to pull a Brady and decides he wants to unretire. Speaking of which, Tom Brady's comeback just so happens to be another one of the more intriguing storylines heading into 2022. Let's skip over the whole how much does Brady have left in the tank part of the story, since we've basically been debating that every offseason since the early 2010s. Tom Brady's just about done. Could be an injury, it could be poor play, it could be a changing team, but they ain't ever the same after 41. The fall has not been as precipitous as I anticipated. And instead, let's frame it as, now that Tom Brady has unretired, what will he do that downright shocks everyone and furthers his already impressive case for being the undisputed GOAT? In 2020, it was winning the Super Bowl in his first year with the Bucks. 2021, at age 44 I might add, he led the league in passing yards and touchdowns. Somehow, someway, even at his advanced age, the NFL world is still Tom Brady's oyster. Furthermore, it's going to be fascinating to see which veteran stars are sucked into his orbit and try to chase a ring with number 12. You know, now that he's signed back on for another year. And how about Brady's old team, the New England Patriots? The overall state of the union in Foxborough is also going to be a huge storyline heading into 2022. I don't think that anyone in their right mind has Bill Belichick on the hot seat or anything like that, but one can't help but wonder what the team will look like heading into year two with Mac Jones at the helm. 
Overall, he was a very effective game manager during his rookie season, leading the Patriots to a 10-7 record, which is really all you can ask for from a rookie quarterback. That being said, I'd be lying if I said there weren't times that it looked like he was holding the offense back a smidge. Or at least that the Patriots were hesitant to give him the green light. It'll be even more fascinating, however, to see what happens if Mac doesn't take a step forward. Even more so if he regresses. Belichick's football wizard reputation is certainly still intact, but with each passing year post Tom Brady, it is inching closer and closer to the day. Especially if Brady continues to have success out on his own. New England, however, isn't the only fan base wondering if their quarterback is going to take that next step. Out in Southern California, Chargers fans are eager to see what Justin Herbert looks like in year three. The only difference being, the step for Herbert isn't from game manager to franchise quarterback, it's from budding star to superstar. Herbert has shown repeatedly over his first two years in the league that he has the ability to be a top three quarterback in the league. It gets glossed over with the likes of Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen rising to prominence in the last couple of years, but Herbert has had an amazing start to his career, and his progression has given every indication that the best is yet to come. It seems like, at the minimum, they have a perennial pro bowler, capable of keeping his team in playoff contention year in and year out. Kinda like former Chargers QB Phillip Rivers. And that's the worst case scenario. It honestly looks like the sky could be the limit for this kid, and his upcoming season should paint a much clearer picture of just how high Herbert's ceiling really is. While we're talking about quarterbacks, there are two more QB-driven storylines to keep an eye on heading into the season. First, what will Russell Wilson look like as a member of the Denver Broncos? The Super Bowl-winning quarterback is turning 34 this season, and is coming off one of the worst seasons of his career, both individually and for his team. It was actually the first losing season Wilson's had in his 10-year career, which is pretty crazy in and of itself, especially within the context of him being a third-round draft pick who won the starting job in camp as a rookie. It's going to be very interesting to follow along with Denver and see how he meshes in there. The Broncos have looked like a team that was just a quarterback away for the last couple of years, and after striking out in the draft a couple of times post Peyton Manning, they've decided to go back to the veteran quarterback well. Let's just hope for the Broncos fans' sake that this looks more like like the Manning experiment rather than the Joe Flacco debacle. Coincidentally, the other quarterback storyline is with Kyler Murray, another undersized signal caller that played in the NFC West last year. Murray's story, however, is a little bit different. The Heisman Trophy winner is coming off a tumultuous offseason, in which he scrubbed his social media of any mention of the Arizona Cardinals. You know, the organization that cuts his paychecks. Was there a scrubbing of the Instagram account on purpose? Or was that, how did that happen? No, that was, that was that, like I said, that was... That was if if you're a kid my age, you know, like you're used to like people take off all that. Like that's just a thing. And um, honestly, like I said, there, there was I took everything off of there besides one picture. So it wasn't it had nothing to do with the Cardinals um, or anything like that. At first, it was a little unclear what the issue was. Murray's been good his first few seasons, but he hasn't been Pat Mahomes good. So there really was no reason to expect that he'd be getting a new contract before year four. And he was coming off an embarrassing performance in the playoffs against the divisional rival Los Angeles Rams. So it really wasn't a strike while the iron is hot type of situation. As it turns out, a number of NFL insiders believe that Murray was really just humiliated by the loss, and in some ways, feeling like he was almost scapegoated for the team's overall performance, which, spoiler alert Kyler, the quarterback always gets the blame, and the glory in the NFL. That's why they get the big contracts that you seem so interested in. It does seem like some of the tension has dissipated, but if Arizona struggles early, Kyler in particular, we could see things get very, very ugly very, very quick. Okay, moving away from the quarterback position, let's chat about a couple of superstar pass catchers who landed in new locations this past offseason. Tyreek Hill requested a new contract, which was promptly denied and followed up by a trade request. The Chiefs ended up sending him down to Miami, where he subsequently signed a four-year $120 million deal, which included over $50 million in guaranteed money to stay with the franchise long-term. 
It'll be interesting to see what Hill looks like without Mahomes throwing him the ball, and the rest of that high-powered Chiefs offense around him. And conversely, what will the Chiefs attack look like without Tyreek taking the top off of opposing defenses? I think it's fairly safe to say that the Chiefs will still be formidable, but how much will they end up missing their star wideout? And while Hill's talented enough to make a sizable impact, how much regression will there be if there's any? On the other hand, how much will his addition do for Dolphins' young quarterback to attack Vailoa, who many believe is heading into a make-or-break year this season? We'll be following along with a number of similar storylines that have popped up following Green Bay's decision to ship Devontae Adams to the Las Vegas Raiders. Who's going to feel the split more, Aaron Rodgers or Devontae Adams? Vote now on your phones. Adams is going to a solid offense in Vegas with a very capable quarterback in Derek Carr, but no one is ever going to mistake Carr's abilities for Rodgers. While Green Bay will certainly miss Adams, who proved to be one of Rodgers' most reliable targets ever. I think they have reason to put their faith in their veteran quarterback. After all, we've repeatedly seen him perform when Adams has missed time due to injury. And last, but not... Oh, actually no, last and least, what's gonna happen with Deshaun Watson? As little as we would like to continue to talk about the NFL's latest public relations botch job, unfortunately, we would be remiss to leave the Deshaun Watson saga off a list of 2022 storylines. For anyone who has been living under a rock for the last two years, Watson has been embroiled in a sexual misconduct scandal involving an unimaginably high number of masseuses. And heading into the 2022 season, it now appears that the controversy will live on. Which, I guess makes sense, I mean, just because the Cleveland Browns wanted to turn a blind eye to Watson's conduct doesn't mean that everyone else will. You have to wonder if the constant backlash that has followed as the scandal continues to publicly unfold as the suits in Cleveland regretting their decision to acquire the troubled quarterback. It just seems that with each week that passes, more news about Watson comes out and it is just never good. Nevertheless, it's gonna be interesting, for lack of a better word, to see how this whole deal shakes out. Will more allegations be made? How will Watson's missed time affect the Browns in 2022? And where does Baker Mayfield exactly fit into all this? Is he able to pick up the pieces and rebound the season after being shunned by the team that drafted him first overall in 2018? Only time will tell. But which do you think is the biggest storyline heading into the 2022 NFL season? Did we miss anything? Let us know in the comments section below. If you like this video and learn a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.